examples. Jesus gave an example of baptism there in that third chapter of Matthew. How to go out in the water, how to be baptized, and the Bible said when he went back up out of the water on the bank, the Holy Ghost descended as a dove and then on his shoulder. But he showed his example, and I, I was thinking this morning, if I was wanting to know how to be baptized, that's the one place I would certainly have in my possession and my your knowledge, amen. I want to make sure that I follow that example. But then I looked at other examples in the Bible, and along the line of what we were trying to teach this morning, Amen. We have two incidents. I'd like to point out, I'd like to make you a, a little more aware of. In the seventh chapter of the book of Genesis, there was one example of uh, Noah. In the 19th chapter of the book of Genesis, there was an example. That was a lot in his family. The seventh chapter, the seventh verse was Noah and his family. Let me go to the rock first. I want to, I want to point something out. Lot lived in Sodom and Gomorrah and wickedness had taken over the city and it had come to the place that it had become a stink in God's nostrils. And because of the stink of the, of the evil and all that was going on, God said, I'm going to destroy it. Well, you know the story of Abraham, how Abraham begged with the Lord and said, if I can show 40 or 50, I, I lose 50. If I can show 40, if I can show 30, if I can show down to 10. He wasn't able to find that many that were righteous, so God prepared to destroy the city and sent the angels down to get Lot ready and take him out of the city, get him out of, the, out of Sodom and Gomorrah. What happened was when the angels got there, they were subject to being molested by the crowd that formed around Lot's house. They prepared Lot to get ready to leave the city before God destroyed it. When they told Lot, Lot went out to see his other daughters. I don't know how many there were. There was more than one because it, it says daughters. But he went out to try to talk with them and inform them, listen, God's going to destroy the city. We have to leave. We have to get out of it. And they mocked him as somebody that was foolish. Amen. But here's the point that I want to make. Lot, when they started to leave him out next morning, they were taking him out of the city. The angels were. It was Lot, his wife, and two unmarried daughters. And remember that unmarried because it had a lot to do with the example that was left there in the city of Gomorrah before it was destroyed. So Lot, his wife, and his two daughters were four. Those four people left the city, and you might ask, well, why didn't Lot's other daughters go? They were married. Now let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis. The second verse. In that verse of scripture we find something that the world has not promoted and they have not acknowledged. They have not acted like it even exists apparently. I've had people tell me that there was no surname to last name or inheritance name in the in Bible time in the old Bible because God never Never gave him a surname, I guess you'd have to say, is what people imagine in their mind, and it's been portrayed that, that Adam and Eve, that was the name, Adam and Eve. But in that 
second verse of that fifth chapter. When God presented Eve to, to Adam in the third chapter of the 120th verse, uh, Adam called his wife named Eve. But in this fifth uh, chapter, the, in the second verse, they were named Adam. Let me turn over there. I want to read that one, that one verse. Latitude two said, And they are the female created he them, and blessed them, and called her name Adam. That means that their name was Adam. That means their family name, their inheritance. Adam, see, a name is very important. If, they, if a person doesn't have a name, they almost are nobody. If you lose your name, so to speak, if, if you lose the, the, what should I say? You lose in who you really are because your name. I ministered one day up to the uh, nursing home. Sister Alma was in there and she had invited somebody to come and eat with her. I dropped in and was going to have a cup of coffee while she slept around and while she was eating. And I went in and sat down and Sister Alma said, This is our pastor, Roy. She looked at me. And she looked at me. And she said, What would you like to know? She said, I know you now, but by that name, Lord, she didn't mean, she didn't mean that it was her. A name is very important, so he said, your name shall be called Adam. So that was Eve Adam, and Adam Adam, I don't know why they're saying double name. But when the children were born, and just like you and I, when you were in the hospital and had a name given to you, you wasn't given your last, your surname, your inheritance name. That wasn't the name that was given to you. You had that name before you ever came out of the birth canal. That was your name. You could claim it. It was yours. Nobody else's. And all the first name did was kind of put a stamp on it as to what it, what you, uh, what your name really is. Mine was just happened to be mom or somebody said, let's name him Roy. So I wound up, when I was born, I was called Roy. In the, I'll get back uh, to that, well, let me, let me read one more time, I want to read that. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called her name Adam. He called her name Adam. Both of them, not one. Somebody said that to this friend. I don't believe in this friend. I don't believe the Bible has this friend. That if there's something that doesn't quite suit our fancy and go in, enter the way you and I might think it should or shouldn't be, well, that's too bad. The Bible is a certain for one thing. Salvation, amen. It tells you how to be born. It tells you how to walk. If you look at the epistles, amen, they begin to tell us what we need to do, how we dress, how we do in life. That we're alive, that we're the salt, that we're on the street now. It tells us how. But a name is one of the most important things of our life, amen. A good name. Proverbs said a good name is better than whatever. A good name. If I didn't have a name, it wouldn't it be a good name, would it? He said a good name. There was four of them. He had some daughters. I don't know how many, but I just said he had some daughters. Those daughters had the privilege. Because God approached them, I don't know uh, whether they, there was intent for Lot to make it fine and if I waited it to them or not. But they were married. Their name. 
name would change. He wasn't the first name. He wasn't the name that was given to him. The name that was changed was the name that they inherited. The devils inherited the names. That was the name that the God went to talk to. It's his, his daughters. Their name had been changed from whatever to whatever. <laughs> to their husband's name. Somebody said, well, how do you know when they had husband name changed like we do now? I venture to say the example that was left up for was left for the express purpose of showing you and I, amen, that the only names that went to God was the last names or the ones that had the inherited names. Those were the only ones that went with God. Then looking at the seventh chapter, another example. Seventh chapter of Genesis. Uh, Noah and his family, when they went in, there was Noah, his wife, and Zeb. Zeb, Zeb. Well, anyway, there's the three sons. Those three sons had married. Their wives had taken on their names. That was the only reason they got on the ark, was because their names were changed to that of Noah. Noah and his family got on the ark. Every one of them had the last surname or the inhabitant's name. And that's the same thing with you and I. We're of the, the bride of Christ. We're the bride of God. We're God's children. We're called by his name. So when the time comes, like the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians informs us, this old flesh, mortal flesh is going to put on immortality. We're going to take on a, a different appearance, a different, we can't inherit heaven with this old flesh. It's not possible, but it has to be changed. So what we're looking at is the change that takes place before the rapture. The rapture, when it takes place, is too late to change. It's going to take before that happens. Amen. If someone gets baptized, they take on the name of the name of the person that they were baptized in. We go back to the name of the Father and, and the Son and the Holy Ghost. What would they do? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It looks like the world, it looks like people, it looks like ministers, it looks like pastors, and, and people that go to church, it looks like they look at that and say, what's their name? What is their name? 
chapter of Acts, Peter and John had come down to the temple at the hour of prayer, about the ninth hour, the Bible said. There they met this man that had been made from his mother's womb. He was asking all, he was glad to come or some vessel that he received the alms in. And he no doubt wanted Peter and John to give him money, to give him alms. That was his way of existing. So he helped the cup out. Peter and John came up to him and Peter said these words. He said, Silver and gold have I none. I don't have any silver and gold, but said I do have something. I know the Bible doesn't say it that way, but I'm saying it that way because you want me to point it to us. He said, Silver and gold I don't have, but such as I do have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the 16th verse of that same chapter, the people ran up after they saw this lame man leaping and running and jumping as he's going into the temple at this hour of prayer. When they saw him, they began to, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of excitement generated, and they came to Solomon's porch where Peter happened to be, and they began to act like they were worshiping Peter. Peter got a little uh, rebuked. He got rebuked a little bit. What are you looking at me that way for? Us that way, like we are some great somebody. He said, His name. Through His name, let this man stand here. Through faith in His name, let this man stand here. Hold His name. So His name was the reason why. That was what Peter had to give him, was just the name. So in the 16th verse, Peter said, it was his name. How did you make this man whole? It was his name through faith in his name. That's why. Then that same man in the fourth chapter, Paul and John were teaching about the resurrection, and they were talking about the resurrection, and people were getting aggravated especially the uh, high priest and the uh, other dignitaries from the temple. They began to listening to what Peter had said. Peter was preaching the, uh, about the resurrection and they got kind of hostile about it. We don't want you teaching out of here. So they threw him in prison. They had been chained him for the night. The next morning they set about the high priest, the captain of the guard, the scribes and the Pharisees, and, and begin to question Peter John in that seventh verse. By what name or by what power? See, that name was what Peter was talking about. That name. It's an important thing, dear man. You can't deny the fact that the Bible says it's through his name that these things. Philippians 2 and 9 said that God exalted him and gave him a name that was above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee was going to bow. In heaven, in earth, and under the earth. And every tongue was going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Every tongue. The name was going about to the name of Jesus. See, that was the given name that was given to him in Matthew 1 18. Said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ, the birth, we found went to the courthouse and looked for my birth certificate. You know what it says on it? It said, Lloyd Hamilton. See, that's my name. That's my birth certificate. The 18th verse of that first chapter says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was 
from this world. Let me get off that minute and I want to uh, use a little different strategy of teaching this. I, I, I just wanted to show the importance of the name. The name has to be the same family name. His name was Jesus Christ. So in order to be a part of the family of Jesus Christ, it's going to take time, effort to put forth, amen, to go to be baptized in the name Jesus Christ. It doesn't just mean any baptism work. In Mark 16, 16, he said, Go and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Lord. No, that's 28 and 5, 19. I got it in my mind, but I'll think of it in a minute. But the name is an important thing in our lives. Everything we do it requires a name. But every transaction, every thing that we do, it requires that we show our name. If you go to the bank, if you go to buy something, if, uh, if you got a check and you got a card, that card says you have to, your name has to be on it. Everything we do is backed up by our name. But I want to, uh, as I said, I want to get away from that just and get to something a, a little different that's not talked very much, not mentioned very often. In fact, I, I'm not sure I've ever heard anybody mention it but myself. Let me I want to look at for just a, a few moments, and I can't take a, a long time. I tell the, the congregation around here I'll probably take a couple hours or so, but I won't do that. The importance of the word thee in the English language. I'm sure that everybody here has had enough uh, school English to know that. Thee is a noun. Now, if I want to, yeah, if I want to get to the name, Amen. This is what I. This is what I'm talking about. This small three-letter word is probably not thought of as being very important to most people. In fact, to most of us, it's, it's just another word. And it just seems to find its way into our language without any conscious help, conscious help. So allow me to address this small, a very important word, and hopefully I can show it. It's you and how important this small word is to our language. It is used to divide the world that we process through language into two categories. Old information, information that is the speaker assumes the hear or knows and new information the speaker assumes that here uh, the hear does not know how this word uh, is used you will have to if you know what how to use this word you'll have a better understanding of the of whether or not we're dealing with a proper noun or a proper noun. A proper noun indicates names of people, countries, states, etc. They indicate one specific thing or person, and they point to one and only one example of a, of a type. English proper names are always written with the first letter capitalized. Words like Christ, Jesus, God. These are all proper nouns. Proper nouns do not need the word the. A proper noun does not need the word the. Remember that I'll point out in a minute. In fact, a proper noun cannot exist. 
except, except under certain unusual circumstances, cannot accept the word thee. They'd have a, a thee in front of Christ or Jesus or whatever. They play such an important role as classifier. It is referred to as a, as a determinant. A noun that is preceded by the word the is a common noun, except in special cases, which we will explain. The word the does not normally precede, nor does it need to precede a proper noun. But in cases where the precedes a proper noun, then that would be an ex exclamatory determinant. Here are some examples of the use of the exclamatory determinant. You might ask me now, what's the point? What's the point? Notice, let's go back to Matthew 28 and, and actually look at it. It says this. Baptizing in the name of the, the Father. You know why the is in front of Father? Because it's not a proper noun. It's a common noun. Name of the Father, name of the Son, both of them, the name of the Holy Ghost. We look at John 14, 26, and it says, When the Comforter is come, which is the Holy Ghost, he'll lead you and guide you in all things and bring all things to remembrance. That's the Comforter. That's the Bible said, In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost, the name of the Holy Ghost, I would assume, I would think, a man would be confident because that's his exclusive job to comfort you and I, to give us that we need, to point out to us not wrong and what we should, shouldn't do. The Holy Ghost is, is our direct contact with God because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. So, this little word, the, indicates and divides whether or not it's a common noun or whether it's a proper noun. The proper noun, as, it, as I read there, always starts out with a, a word with a Anyway, when a word starts out and the first letter of that word is capitalized, that's a proper noun. A proper noun always capitalizes the first letter, whether it be a name or no matter what it might be. So knowing what noun the goes in front or Let's, let's say, for instance, using our president. Our president's name is Donald Trump. Now, I'm going to have to do a little change it or a little something to it. I want people to understand. Let's say I say Donald Trump president. That, that, that's not proper English. Donald Trump president needs something to determine or classify of some kind. They, they are a need something to indicate. You mean you are really the king is an illustration of exclamatory. You're the king. This illustrates you use the you king used as an exclamatory, not knowing in the surprise of knowing determined before a proper noun. And one reason I, I did that, got into that involved, was look at the 16th chapter of Matthew. The 
16 verse. Jesus was informing of the disciples. He said, what do men? Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, well, some of them say that Elijah, or Elijah, or Elijah, or this prophet, or that prophet. And he said, well, who do you say that I am? Peter, I don't know, probably paused and thought about it a second, but it was revealed to Peter then what his name was, who he was. Peter is exclamatory out of now. Says, You are the Christ. And our church world said the Christ is means anointed or Messiah. If we say it's anointed means anointed or Messiah, then that means if I take the name Christ and I assume or I use it in such a way when I say Jesus Christ put it down on paper and think about it sometime Jesus Christ is the name that Luke gave that would be started in Jerusalem. But let's look at Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ is, is shown in the Bible 718 times, Jesus Christ. You know what's wrong with that? If it is a title, if it is a uh, 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 if it is Messiah, so if, if, if uh, Christ is a title, that means Messiah or Redeemer or whatever, then that means that Jesus Christ is in the Bible wrong. All of the time that Jesus Christ is put in the Bible is is put wrong, if that be the case. And just like saying Donald President, who is he? The same thing with the Jesus Christ. If Christ is not his name, you see, we're looking at the fact, amen, that Christ happens to be a name. Now, but we can't have Jesus Christ and say Christ is anointed, means anointed. No, it doesn't. It means the last name of God himself. That's the name that you and I are going to have to take on if we actually are going to go to heaven. We've got to take the name on His name. We have to be married to it one of these days after we leave the earth. But we have to do it in his name. So notice the fact, amen, that 718 times the name in, in the Bible is Jesus Christ. Now look at the fact, amen, in uh, 1 John 2.22. Said, who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? Let's turn over there and get that for you, brother Brown. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? Who is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. So if I look, look again at that 22nd verse, it says, Who is the Lord? But he that denies that Jesus is the. See the little word the that's inserted in there? Now, if that were a name, if Christ were, I mean, if, if Christ was a name, then that's the way it 
should be printed. It should be printed as need, Christ. But if Christ is the name, then the need doesn't belong there. The world, the religious world, has taken it and left the word need out of all that there is pertaining to the name of God. Not making sense for this. This illustrates the as an exclamatory, not knowing the knowing license term before a proper noun. See, there's a proper noun here. Who is the liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? Okay. It's a negative. Christ is the name that was given to you and me now. And it shouldn't be anything here that shouldn't be anything else because that's a proper noun. When the is used in the forefront, it is sending a signal to make us aware of the common noun in use, except in the case of an exclamatory noun. One of the most recognizable needs for the use of the word the is when a name, proper noun, is given followed by a title, common noun. For instance, allow me to use your President Donald Trump as an example. If I say Donald Trump President, if a person didn't know, they'd think his name was Donald Trump President. But see, there's a classifier that's inserted there between. Let me go back to it. There's a, a common noun, I mean, a the inserted between Trump and President. So it would read like this if I were to say Donald Trump, the President. What it's talking about, but if I don't use a D, it says Donald Trump president. See what they write the language goes to where? There has to be the, because of uh, nouns that we have. We've got a noun for a name, and it's a proper noun. Well, our name is a noun, but D is a D minus the D indicates the fact that. These two nouns are the only two that are needed to verify the fact, amen, that we're dealing with a name. And when a common noun is used, it's, it, it means that um, it means that it's what I want to say. It's a lower bracket. There's no, it's not uh, capitalized. Let me read what it says. Common uh, nouns are general words for types of things. They do not stand for one specific example of a thing, but rather for a class of things, for a title, a word such as president. Lord, boy, girl, United States. See, it has to be the United States. If I would say, I'm going to the United States, I'd have to, if I don't want to be there, then it doesn't complete the sentence. I think I can say that way, can I? They are general words for types of things. President, you could go and just do a list of your own and find that common noun doesn't work. The name is involved, or a capitalized letter is involved. The, the noun, the D doesn't, it's supposed to be the D, except, like I was trying to point out, it's, except in the case of an exclamatory. When Peter spoke up and said, Lord, you're the Christ. What Jesus said, did everybody remember Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Written down what? It revealed the, the name, the fact they man that you're Christ. You're the rock. In fact, Isaiah 26, 28, 26, or 16, but Isaiah that the Lord has laid in Zion for a foundation of stone. My, we can run the stone here and there and look at everywhere. He said that God has laid in Zion for a stone, 
generation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone. But the Ephesians 2 20 said he was the author for the foundation, and he was the cornerstone. Well, let me say it one more time. The proper noun goes in front of if I were talking to Bob, and I tell somebody, Bob, and join me here today. I don't need to put anything in front of it. I leave it alone. It's just not. But if I were to say it in an explanatory way, Robert D., I have to have, a, I mean, if I put a D there, it doesn't work. Let me, let me do that again. Robert, D. Robert, I won't go for the D. Robert. That's unless it were in uh, an explanatory fashion. And an explanatory fashion is like this it's a surprise of not knowing. And all at once realizing, you're Bob. You're the Bob. But if it's not an explanatory, the D wouldn't be there. It would be just plain. Bob will be here today. Now, I, I drop it down and the Bob will come and I say, man's not coming. I have to use a knee to say that man's coming. Uh, the man's coming. That makes sense, doesn't it, Jimmy? I'm going to hush. I wanted to show the importance. If I get baptized, and I get baptized using the term Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and I use the in a position that it, it's not clarifying or declaring who it really is, except it's giving me the fact that it's a common noun, that Father's not a name, Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name, and if we have the Holy Ghost, but it's not a name. I hope I have the Lord able to understand today. This is an important subject, and whether I can get it across this time or not, it has the importance of being that if I don't get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then I've got a problem. See, the Bible indicates and gives us examples, amen. Let me go back and just mention that. Gives us example in, in uh, Noah's case. Gives us example in Lot's case. Only ones that went in, the only ones, can I emphasize that, the only ones that went in were not Lot's daughters that had been married. They didn't go. Only ones that went were the two daughters that were single. They were unmarried. They didn't have a husband. Their name had not been changed. They had the same name as their father. The wife had the same name as the father. So that means, that, and the sons naturally did. So that means that eight of them, in Noah's case, four of them in Lot's case, went in. They went in because they were on the same name. They were the same inheritance name. In the first chapter of Hebrews and the fourth one, it talks about inheritance. And so you can look into that right now. And it's a name by inheritance. Greater than Ephesians, I believe. But he's got a name. That's a word. The name of Jesus Christ is the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not really a name. It's just a common noun. Thank you. 